Welcome back to another episode of Plant Based Dads. I'm Joey. I'm Tim. Oh my God. The food bandit. Tim. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, so what we're doing today, uh, well, you know the intro stuff. Uh, we have Plant Based Channel, mostly uh, whole food, a lot of stock solution. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the show, Patreon link below. So check that out. Today we're doing something I absolutely hate, which is meal prep for the week. I don't hate meal prep for the week, but I hate filming it because it's just one long four to five hour video, right? Well, like there's I, a lot of editing. And, uh, cause, and but I, right, I can't put a five hour video out, so I've got to edit it into smaller pieces. But Joey, what the people the love. The people love the meal prep videos. I know, I know. All right, so here's what we're doing today. Let me go over the list, okay? And uh, not in this order, but we're gonna make our potato and squash and pepper casserole bake, right? Perfect. Yep. Right. So this is kind of my first week of meal prepping after the surgery, and I've kind of recovered for about three weeks, right? I'm kind of ready to get back in the swing of things, right? But we're also uh, trying to keep it simple. <clears throat> that really worked, you know, simple. Yes, I learned recovering that really I just eat too much. Like I just ate little bowls. Of, I, I ate a lot of beans, right? Because they were like, you have to like eat a lot of salty food. I don't know why it was to avoid something, but after the surgery. I had to have less water and a lot more salt, right? Yeah, and we kept the fiber up. Right, yeah. and right, right. And they said keep your fiber up, which of course isn't a problem. So I was just, I basically was eating our pinot bean recipe, right? Yeah. And I was just putting salt, like I don't put salt on anything. I was putting salt on it. It was actually really good. And that, for three weeks, that's basically what I've eaten. All right, so we're making our potato squash and, and pepper casserole, all right? So we're gonna double that recipe. We are. Right, yeah. And we have a video to that right up here if you wanna check that out. Then we're gonna make our, our Instant Pot Pinot Beans recipe. We're making the refried beans recipe, we're just not gonna, we're not gonna grind them up, we're just gonna leave them whole. Yeah, our son is home for the summer. I mean, there's a couple staples, and beans is one beans of them. Beans is one of them. I mean, yeah. he eats Pinot Beans like at least one today. Yeah, they're going right? on a salad, right. a wrap. We're gonna make also his cashew cheese sauce. Lex grew up on cashew cheese, nacho cheese sauce. Um, not the one we normally eat because it's all cashews and you know, it's all fat. But for him, it's fine, so we're gonna make that. It is definitely the best of the cheese sauces. Like, no matter what sauce I make, it doesn't compare to this. Sometimes I will have a little bit of it. Uh, but we're making his cashew cheese mm. sauce for sure. We can sneak a carrot in there. Yeah. Uh, we're also making his pizzas, right? We have we meal prep his foods also. Yep. So you'll see how we do that. We're going to make some corn tortillas. That's going to be just so throughout the week I can put uh, tor uh, flat, uh, tacos together. So we make our own corn tortillas. And the corn tortilla, the corn is the, is the starch. And we just fill it up with vegetables, right? So we'll do that. Um, we're gonna make some overnight oats because if I don't eat breakfast, then I start snacking all day, right? Yep. So breakfast is either overnight oats or the next thing on my list, fresh cut fruit, yep. right? And then we're gonna make some salad fixins or spring roll fixins, just raw stuff to have around. Yep. So after swim practice and all that, when you get home, we could either throw a salad together or throw spring rolls together. Yeah, I'm covering for someone out on medical leave and so I'm getting home later. He's so things that we time. can put together. Um, so the tacos fits in with that. So the salad toppings can be made for the tacos, right. for the spring rolls, for the salads, uh, and then for the wraps as well. So, so you'll see people in, if you're in the Facebook group, people will, and even just um, some you know YouTube influencers, right? Will take those little containers you have with like the three or four compartments, uh, bento box, right? Yeah. And they'll make a meal like this, and they'll make it for the week, and they'll have five of them lined up, and each one will have. Pinot beans, like fruit and a salad. Pinot and beans, and they'll have five of those, right? So we don't do that. Nobody wants the same meal five days in a row. Mm -hmm. What we're making is a bunch of ingredients, right? And then if we want salad one night, the salad fixes are there, we'll make a salad. If we want spring rolls, it's the same stuff we made for the salad, right? Except we'll throw in like some ramen on top of it and roll it into a spring roll with the dipping sauce. The same thing with the beans, right? We're making the beans. If we want burritos one night, or if Lex wants a bean and cheese burrito, bam, there it is, right? If we want a potato with beans on it, right, and cheese sauce, like a whole baked potato with broccoli, well, then we just gotta cook the potato in the air fryer that night, and all the toppings are already done. So I don't really make my meals ahead of time all week, but we make the ingredients to make different meals throughout the week. That's kind of how my food prep works, right? And this pizza thing works because Lex one day just can't eat enough food, right? Yeah, the pizza's with, a bit different. And with Lex, swimming went on. Yeah, like, Lex is home for the summer as as I am, and Lex will want a pizza. I don't make pizza, yeah. right? They're all they're all pre-made in a bag, ready to go. I just pull one out, heat it up for eight yeah. minutes, and bring it to him. He's got his own little personal pizza. So I'm making them right now. Right. He just pops it in the toaster oven. That's and it's all super we do. easy. Yeah. 
So they're, they're already pre-made and ready to go. All right, so we're mm -hmm. gonna start first with our uh, pinot beans, the Instant Pot pinot beans. Yes. Right? All right, let's get that going. All right, so I've got my recipe right here. You know that all my recipes are in this green binder and I know I need to put a, a recipe book out, like we've talked about that. Um, I had so many plans for the summer and then uh, that, that whole uh, surgery thing just kind of put the kibosh on all that stuff. So uh, I don't know when that's happening. Why don't you hand me the Instant Pot right there and let's get going on this. But this is, people always ask me like what size. This is the six quart Instant Pot. I bought this like when they first came out, right? Like it was one of the first ones. Um, and we've had it ever since. I would love a new Instant Pot, right? Instant Pot, if you're watching this, send me one and I'll like talk all about it. Uh, but there ain't nothing wrong with this one, so I kind of can't get rid of it, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of stuck using it, but this is the six quart uh, Instant Pot Duo. The Instant Pot Vegan Refried Beans recipe. This is right off my, uh, off the plant base. Oh, so that's another thing. All of the recipes, people are like, I did that one last week or two weeks ago where I had it like just a bunch of recipes in four minutes, very Bosch style, right? Where it just flies across the screen with the different uh, ingredients and people are trying to write this down and don't do that, right? Go to the website, uh, www.plantbaseddads.net and all of our recipes are there printable, right? You're gonna have to, I don't really have any type of like breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. They're all just kind of there. Like that's as far as I got on it when I put it together. But you can absolutely bring up this recipe and print it, right? You don't need to write anything down while we're doing this, all right? So anything I've made in the last year is on that website. All right, the pinot beans first. First thing we're gonna do is get our uh, aromatics in. So we're gonna cut up uh, like two onions, right? Okay. And some garlic and toss it in here and get that going. So let's do that now. We got dough section up. We're gonna cover this, and it's time to get chopping. All right, so we're gonna cut up the the uh, veg. I hate cutting up veggies. This is the part that Tim always does. I hate it. We're gonna cut up the two onions, and we've got the uh, the Dal Strong uh, mini Santuku knife, right? For this, this cuts right through anything. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like a little mini chef knife. We absolutely love it. All the Dal Strong knives that we use on the show is a link below uh, where you can get your own. Um, and they have a wonderful selection, and uh, let's check it out. You can use the same ones that we're doing. Thank you, Dalsong, for supplying the knives to us. All right, okay. so we're gonna cut those two yeah. up. So we're doing two onions, <coughs> look at the recipe. We're at the point now of eating beans so much that we're just doubling the spices, yeah. doubling the veggies, doubling the garlic onion, you know. We found that the way the recipe is online is really good, but like, the more we eat this, the more we want the spices doubled. So we are kind of just doubling everything. But don't worry about what we're doing here. The recipe is online at plantbasedhouse.net. Just print it from there, and and you'll get it, okay? So while Tim's cutting up those onions, uh, there's a place in Old Town Scottsdale, what was it called that you went to with the vinegars? Do you oh, remember? Outrageous. Okay, so that, it's their own brand? Yeah. All right, so the place in uh, Old Town Scottsdale, Outrageous, they have olive oils and vinegars, and these are some little baby flavored vinegars that we got. This one's apricot, uh, white peach, um, uh, alfus mango, right? And uh, this one is Sicilian lemon. That's interesting, right? Since half my family's from Sicily. Uh, these are just two ounce bottles. I can only imagine how much they were, right? Uh, and we're gonna use these, not on this show, but we're gonna, like on the show, but not on this episode. We're gonna use these to try making some new salad dressing. Cause I feel like most of the salad dressings I eat are lame or they're made with cashews, which I love, but I'm trying to avoid that. So I've been wanting to make more vinegar like we used to love oil and vinegar dressings, right? And we can't obviously eat the oil and vinegar dressings anymore. So, and I feel like the, the vinegar based dressings without the oil are really too strong. So some of these flavored vinegars, we're gonna try those. We'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, definitely the, the salad dressings that we make with cashews or tofu are great, but I feel like those are special occasion. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. Yeah, special occasion when I reach my skinny weight, which hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the Instant Pot going here. Let's set it to, uh, to saute, which is right here. We'll let it come to temperature a little bit. I'm gonna put some water, maybe a tablespoon in there. And as soon as it starts steaming, I'm gonna drop the aromatics in here. The garlic is four cloves or about eight cloves. Yeah, you can't have too much garlic. So. All right, so we also normally add a can of hatch chilies to this, um, but you got some fresh ones, right? Yeah, so there's a Latino market that uh, chars uh, poblano peppers and uh, that's what I got and then I just chopped them up and then I froze them in individual servings. 
All right, so we're good there? Oh, good there. All right, so you can see the steam coming out of here, hopefully, and I'm gonna throw the, the uh, aromatics right in here. All right, so I just kind of tossed that in there, and I don't have a second camera set up on this because I already have a recipe video for this um, that you can check out. So I'm not doing a whole like how to do this, just showing you that we're making this. Um, but I'm just gonna mix these up, give it a little mixy mixy here, and then wait for the, uh, the onions to start getting uh, uh, softened. So about five minutes of sauteing the veggies. That's all we're doing here. In the meantime, uh, let's get the rest of our ingredients together. Okay. We've got a pound of uh, dried uh, pinto beans. Okay, cumin, chili powder, okay. and salt. Cumin, right? chili powder, and salt, right, and the six cups of water. All right, so take bringing bring you over six cups of water. So when we cook the pinto beans, the dry beans, and the, and the, uh, the water in there, the, the Instant Pot requirement for cooking dry beans is six, pot, six cups of water to one pound of beans. All right, so I feel like this is pretty soft. Uh, it's definitely softened a lot. So I'm gonna put my spices in now. Tim is already like kind of threw all the spices in one shot. But what I have in here is a teaspoon of chili powder. We've put a little extra. Double. Um, a teaspoon of cumin, we've doubled that. Double. Two teaspoons of salt, all right? You can Double. kind of adjust that. Without the salt, I feel like it doesn't taste as good. So, I mean, I know some of you who are salt free, like I would put that in there. Um, you can also do it afterwards, depending on your taste. You can do right? that too, right? Yeah. Uh, so all of that is in this this one uh, ramekin, right? I'm just gonna toss that in, and I like to toss it in right at the end of the softening because before I put everything in, because it kind of activates the spices, right? You can kind of smell them now, connecting all this hot food in here and to the bottom, and it makes a little fond on the bottom, right? So when you throw in the uh, the broth, it kind of deglazes the pan, the pan, right? All right, that, you can smell that now. You can smell all the spices, yeah. right? It smells really good. All right, so that's in there, and I'm gonna cancel um, the cooking on here, right? We've, we've, connect, we've uh, softened the veggies, we've activated the spices. Now we're just gonna put the rest of the ingredients in, which at this point is just the beans and the water. Yeah. So I've got my pound of beans. These are a little wet because I did rinse them, right? Since we buy them in bulk, everything's rinsed. Right? You don't know what's in those bulk bins, right? This one was in a bag, but I mean, you just don't know, right? All right, and I've got my six cups of water, right? Yep, so I'm just gonna throw that in here. All right, there you go. So that's kind of it for the ingredients. It's really simple. Um, some aromatics, some spices, and the pinto beans, right? That's it. This is an amazing recipe. I mean, it's, it's the best uh, pinto beans I've ever had. All right, so we're gonna pop this down. This the we just washed this. Yeah, the seals on there. Pop it in place. Put it into sealing position, and we're gonna cook this for 35 minutes. So let me come over here and set this uh, for 35 minutes. So manual pressure. One, two, three, 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 four, thirty-five. Manual. All right, 35 minutes. It'll take time to come up the pressure. It'll cook. And then I'm gonna uh, do it, let it do a natural release. So that's doing its thing, right? We can move on to the next thing, right? Yeah. All right, so next we're gonna work on the, the potato and zucchini squash bake. Um, that's kind of one of our favorite recipes, right? It's just really good. Um, Lex likes peppers, Manoa likes potatoes. This works as well. And you can see them behind us. Um, so we're doubling the recipe, so the zucchinis look kind of small, so it's a little more than six. But. All right, so let's set that up. We're going to have to wash the potatoes, wash everything, and get it ready out here, right? Yep. All right, so let's do that um, and get started. All right, so we've started cutting up some of the veggies for this uh, potato and zucchini squash bake. Um, I've, they're right here, and, and I mean, the only bowl that we have big enough to do this is this big bowl. So. We're gonna kind of cut it and just kind of toss it in here, okay? Yeah. So I wanted to show you, I'm roughly cutting this. They'll shrink when we bake. Uh, this is a wall of wall of sweet onions. So really, it's gonna be nice when it's baked. It will be really good. And then um, you don't like chunks of garlic, so I minced this really well as far as yeah. the garlic portion. I love the taste of garlic, but I hate bi uh, biting it. Is the oven on by any chance? All right, it's Alexa, not. ask Geneva to set the oven temperature to 400 degrees. Yes. Okay. I guess we could have walked over there and turned it on. We could have. Yes. 
All right. Well, I, I wanted to show you that while I'm meal prepping, I'm no drinking some hibiscus tea. Okay. Wow. And I bet you're wondering why. Why, Tim? So I'm not middle... wondering, but okay. <laughs> this summer, I'm, one of my little goals is just to um, drink tea at least once a day because we do all this antioxidant stuff in the morning. But Mitch the vegan, I think, is it Mike, Mike the vegan? Mike the vegan. Yeah, Mike the vegan. Showed the scientific study: if you can just drink an antioxidant tea midday, it just really help boost your antioxidant power. So, anyway, one of my goals. So I thought I'd just show you how fun tea drinking could be. Yeah, fun, little fun. little orange peel and cinnamon or something. Okay. So wait, I'm not. I'm hang on. I'm not a tea drinker or a coffee drinker, kind of right. Yeah. But you are a tea drinker. So is April. You and April are like are yeah. tea buddies. But. You can make this delicious. There's another tea we just called, tried pea, uh, pea flower tea. It's mm. blue. I'll show you the guys later. Leave, but leave a message in the comment, leave a comment below if you want to see like Tim do tea stuff. I feel like he should do all that tea stuff like on tea with Tim. Yeah, when right? you're looking for alternatives to soda, I, I, there there's some good stuff out there. You just gotta I, know about I it. I hate water. All right, what all do you right. got here? Today I found some uh, organic watermelon jerky. Can I, can I see what the ingredients are in this? Oh. All right, so ingredients. Organic watermelon. That's all that's in this. Oh, really? Right? Nice. So it's just watermelon. Did you know that or was that a surprise? Um, I think we did look, but okay. you know I sometimes bring surprises. I, yeah, so... Not a positive I, I was never a jerky eater to start with, so he brought home mushroom jerky. I like did not even try that. But let me see how the... I mean, it does have a jerky texture. Yes. It's actually really good. Once you start chewing it, it's delicious. Yeah, so if you want a no oil little sweet snack, this is actually fits this the bill. Really nice, yeah. yeah. This is like a game changer if you like jerky. This is it right anyway, here. Kind of some fun, and wow, Joy actually likes this. You can see like the watermelon seeds in it and all that stuff, right? Like this is actual watermelon that I don't know what they did with it to make it jerky, but it's really good. All right, so the onions are in. Now we work on the peppers, right? Yeah. This. You guys, it's such a colorful dish. All of a sudden, I've got yellow, orange, and red. So we've got white like peppers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's gonna just pop and be nice. So again, for each slice, I'm doing um, probably three chunks. Again, these shrink while baking, so it can really be this chunky. You can, if your kids are home uh, this summer, they can actually do this, and you don't have to worry about it being exactly right or something. You know, it's just really rough and great. Right? My kid's home all summer. He ain't doing any of this. No. No. Because he has, he has two, two dads doing everything for him. I know. Poor, poor guy. He's suffering. So during the last three and a half weeks, um, while I was recovering, uh, and even before that, we were helping our friend Deanna out with her, her kitchen. She got a brand new kitchen. Um, and uh, it started before the surgery. We started helping them. We were help, helping get the cabinets out. And... Uh, and, and put in the wall mounts for the new cabinets and all that. And then my surgery happened, right? And, and then Deanne had surgery on her foot at the same time. So Deanne and I couldn't do anything, but I still went over there. We kind of just sat on our recliners and we just told Tim and her husband, Bobby, hey, put that over there. That cabinet needs to get hung up. Um, and their kitchen's almost done. They're just waiting on the counters to come in, right? Yeah. Um, but it's looking really good. So I, I love being part of a new kitchen install, right? Even if I just get, to, even if I just sit there like and point, I absolutely like, love the process of installing kitchens, right? Well, it really was fun too, because you you see something from your work, it starts coming together. And... Yeah, yeah, and I told them to just get it, right? And then we would install it, right? Yeah. And of course it happened, and, and Deanne's a teacher too, so she had the summer off also. So this was kind of like do or die for the kitchen, right? And then both of us wound up having surgeries, which yeah. was just pretty bizarre. But you and Bobby came through like champions and uh, and got the hard work done, right? You know, um, I don't know if you've noticed, I've been throwing away some of the meal prep stuff. I am putting on my Christmas list that Vitamix composter. Um, so yeah, so you can put all your food scraps in there, have it ready to go for out in the yard. So anyway, just Vitamix. for all you know. Vitamix, if you're listening to this, send us that composter. No. I can tell you right now, I ain't buying that thing for him. So if you want it on the show, you better send it to us, all right? PO box or in put, the link below. Or put it on sale for yeah. Black Friday for sure. Don't bother, they need to send it to us. So far we've dumped, we've dumped in here all three peppers, the yellow and the green squash we're cutting up, right? And then we're gonna throw in the peppers, the potatoes after that. Having a dish like this, all this color, summer, like it's gonna be so fun to reheat and have. Well, there's no oil in it, it's safe, you know, and it's like, I know, I know. it's something to look forward to. 
Yeah, so I love this, that. this dish is fine for the Mary Mini too. Right, because yep. it's just potatoes and vegetables, and that's all it is. And in fact, it's way more vegetables than it is potatoes. So this is a good Mary's mini dish. I know it looks like a lot as well right now, but just remember, like this stuff shrinks down as it as it cooks. So yeah, there'll be some shrinkage. <laughs> all right, so we we've, we've popped in the veggies, right? Yep. So now let's go on with the rest of this. So we're mixing all, all the ingredients together. So we're going to mix right in here. Um, we're going to double it. A cup of dry bread comes. We're going to double that, right? But let's do a two cups of dry breadcrumbs. Okay. All right, so you got your breadcrumbs right there, right? So pop those in, we're just putting everything in. Okay. We're gonna need one tablespoon of crushed red pepper flakes, so we'll put in two tablespoons, so we have a tablespoon there. This one hasn't been opened yet. All right, so we're gonna have two tablespoons of that. Remember, we're doubling this, so um, there'll be a link to this recipe right here, where we are, we actually do a video on it. Follow the, the recipe there, not here, because we're making we're making it much bigger. Um, so we got that. We need a teaspoon of salt. Let's grab out a teaspoon and put in two teaspoons. No, oh. you're not. We're good. Okay, about two teaspoons of salt uh, and some pepper to taste. I like plenty of pepper, so you know, please go to town with that. All right, so we need uh, a teaspoon of paprika. I guess I'll. Just, you got mm. it. Okay. So put two teaspoons of paprika in. Okay, four more. All right, and then a cup of nooch, nutritional yeast. Uh, we're doubling it, so I've got two cups, and let's just dump this in here. All right, so I don't know that you're gonna be able to mix this up. I could probably put it in a bigger bowl if you want. You think that's gonna work? Yeah. Uh, you wanna carefully kind of, you can do this. You wanna carefully kind of fold this together, All right? And you guys can see right here that everything is getting coated. It looks really good. I mean, the, I mean, it, it looks ready to bake, right? So, all right, we're looking good here. So now the next step is we want to um, pop this into some uh, casserole dishes or hot dishes, as you call it, back in Minnesota, right? Um, so we've got two of them right here. They're both 13 by nine pans, right? This Lake Cusse one just a little deeper, but they both do the same thing. We'll just pop it right in here and hopefully they'll fit in both of these. And there is more room in the other one if, these, if this doesn't fit in. Okay, yeah, and let's see if we can dump the rest of that back in here. And that'll give us some topping. Perfect. These are looking really good, right? All right, so you can see here, uh, two beautiful uh, casserole dishes. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, 30 minutes, Actually, it's gonna bake for about 60 minutes. 30 minutes, right? Yeah. We're gonna go in there, mix it all up, right? So it all gets cooked evenly, and then bake it for another 30 minutes. So we're cooking at 400 degrees convection. Right. Both will be in there, uncovered. Uncovered for an hour, halfway, mixing it halfway through. Yeah. All right, let's get these in the oven. We just got a little things uh, cleaned and prepped for this next. Yeah, we just cleaned up a little bit. This thing is a mousse. So next we're gonna make the what are you making? The tortillas. Yeah. So we make our own tortilla shells, right? Out of the corn flour. It's that special corn flour, right? Yeah, it's masa. It's called, maybe you've seen this bag before, masa, but it's just corn? really, yeah, it's just, just corn ground up. All right. Okay? So it's ground up corn flour. And we did this on the a week of, of corn mini video, right? There's yeah. a link to that right here where uh, all we ate was corn all week with vegetables. And it was important because this was like just corn flour yeah. and we filled it up with vegetables, including our cauliflower, uh, our cauliflower meat that we had in there, right? All right, so tell us what to do for this. Okay, so I've got uh, two cups of masa, corn flour, one and a half cups of water. I'm gonna add some lime juice in this. So we're doubling the recipe, right? Yes. So you actually have four cups there yeah. and uh, double the water, right? And uh, there's a recipe on how to make uh, the tortillas and the um, and the, the tacos on uh, plantbasedads.net. So check that out, and it'll tell you exactly how to do this. Whenever we do this type of stuff, like I said earlier, we make it bigger than it normally is, so it may not be exactly like the, the recipe. With such a big mixer, I like doubling it sometimes on this because it just needs better. I feel so. like this mixer requires <laughs> doubling every recipe, really. Okay. Why don't you put it on slow? I'm gonna go to get another one and a half cups of water here. Okay. I'm gonna start it up. All right. Uh, it's on this side, I think, so. Yeah, you have to like bring it up first. All 
right, so we're gonna change the dough hook on this to just the mixer, right? Yeah. All right. And we'll bring this back up. Yes. And Put the turn four. this on. Okay, so we have the flour all mixed up. I'm gonna form a ball now and let it rest for a little bit. So that's why we kind of started to do this now. We'll pick this up a little later. All right, so we're okay. just gonna make a ball out of this, yes. right? Yep. Right. So you can see it's all clumpy, but the moisture's all distributed, so we're good. I mean, it looks like a dough. Yeah. But using that mixing hook was really the best. Just like I would any other dough, go around, kind of tuck it in as I turn. So we're, we're solid here. All right, so that just has to sit for a while? Yeah, we're gonna put this in a bowl. Okay. Just let it sit for a while. Okay, ready to make oats? I am. All right, so I, I make mine a little differently than Tim makes his. I like mine more stiff, he likes his more milky, right? So for mine, I do a ratio of, oh, can you grab the uh, mason jar funnel up there? Oh, yeah. The green funnel. I do a ratio of a half a cup of uh, oats to three quarters of a cup of plant milk. Tim does a half a cup of oats to a cup of plant milk because he likes it milky. So just that's what we're doing. So the, all of them are one half a cup of oats. And I've got this kind of mason jar funnel that just goes right in the mason jar. Um, so you know you don't have to sit here and hold, hold it. So I mean that's just a lot of work. So so that's what we're doing here, and you can put yours in there, right? Yeah. Then we like to use Ceylon cinnamon. Uh, yeah, the Ceylon cinnamon, yes. All right, so we buy, all, we buy uh, oats in bulk um, from Sprouts. Sometimes we get from Costco in a big bag, depends on where we get them, but we always get a big bag of it or enough to fill up this container because we go through it like all the time. I make flour out of oats, I make uh, pancakes out of oats, like I just make so much stuff with oats, yeah. right? All right, so into this recipe, we're gonna put a few things, right? So we're gonna do, uh, now be careful, that's a tablespoon and a half. We're gonna put a tablespoon of chia seeds, right? And this is a tablespoon and a half, so I'm just gonna put uh, three quarters of this in. Tim really wants an opportunity to get a new jar, so. All right, so you go ahead and with that, and remember that's a tablespoon and a half. We're yeah. putting in some chia seeds, right? Um, that kind of helps with the, the odor. <laughs> Butterfingers, what's going on? All right, so next we're putting in uh, a little bit of cinnamon, just like an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon is fine. Um, that's a lot of cinnamon. Okay. I, I won't be putting that much in, that's a lot. My whole life works on measurements, so I'm a math teacher, that's, I mean, measurements is everything. One, two, three, four. All right, that's an eighth mm, of a you teaspoon. You got cinnamon for a bird. Um, mm. And then uh, we're gonna put in uh, some, uh, um, blueberries, now we're just using frozen blueberries, right? And I just put in a half a cup in each one. Uh, so I just do that while I have my uh, funnel right here. So let's do that. And they don't have to thaw them out or anything. They're gonna thaw out uh, in the milk overnight. But like I can't eat this without blueberries. I absolutely need blueberries in it, right? I also like to put in a tablespoon of maple syrup. So I'm gonna do that. I find just a little bit of extra blueberries. I'm good, I don't need the maple syrup. Yeah, I mean, it's not, not everyone needs it. I, I don't know if I need it, I just come accustomed to it, so I'm just gonna put it in. And then, uh, what else were you putting in yours? Now, I have banana in here, but um, since I'm at home, and even when I work during the school year, I put the banana in separately. I'll just bring a banana with me and chop it up and pop it in. Um, I don't put the banana in and then put it in overnight because the banana is just gonna turn brown. So, uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of banana and also. I like adding a little bit of I vanilla. I do also. So for me, I just fill up the jar with the milk. Um, it'll get absorbed up here. Once I put a lid, I can do a little shake, make sure everything's uh, touching moisture. And then I put in three quarters of a cup. So I just measure that out. That's the end of that milk, so we can toss that one. So I pop that in there. I like to kind of make them go upside down to make sure I get all of the oats in the bottom not stuck anymore. So they all get uh, they all get incorporated and all those chia seeds in there too. Yeah. So I've got four uh, 
uh, my uh, overnight oats. You've got three of yours. They're ready to go in the fridge, right? Yes. All right, so we're going to do that next. Now that the steam is released, it smells really good. Yeah, it smells delicious. So we're going to take the cover off here, right? And you can see right here, it's all soupy, steamy, beany. So what we do That's here is, I mean, when we're ready, we store it like this in the water in a container, yeah. right? A glass container. And when we're ready to, to serve beans, we just take a slotted spoon and then we do this and there's our beans, right? And like I was saying earlier, I don't throw this water away because that's all the flavor it cooked in and it stores in, right? So, that, I mean, I love so, all that flavor. So again, not, this isn't refried bean soup. Uh, this is just keeping the flavors all together until you're ready to use it or warm, yeah. reheat it. So if I'm making a burrito, I do this, right? Yeah. And then I just load the burrito up with my beans, right? And it's really good. Or if I want to uh, throw it on top of a potato, you know, or whatever. Let's take a, a taste of this and see how, I mean, I know it tastes, it tastes good. We've had it like many times, but um, it is really hot. So let's see what we got here. Mm, that's really good. Flavors there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, this new recipe is so good. Like these are my favorite beans. And people have said that online. They're like, this is the best recipe I've ever had. Yeah, right. tweak it to your liking. Yeah. If you need more red chili flakes in there, do that. Otherwise, this, this works for our taste, but um, again, so flexible. You want more onion in there, do that. All right, so, so we're done with the beans. We're gonna store them in a container. Yeah. So let's get rid of this and let's start the uh, the cheese sauce for Lex. All right, so for Lex's cheese sauce, Lex and I have a cheese sauce video where him and I make this. And Lex is only like eight years old in that video. He's really small, right? And it was one of the first videos, I think it was like our third video on the channel back in 2018. He's taller than I am now, of course, and he's, you know, almost 16. So, and he's driving. Uh, but it's just, just as much attitude. If you, yeah, it's just even worse. But if you go back and watch that video, it's kind of nostalgic to see him that small. Anyway, cool. okay. here's how we do this. This video, this uh, recipe is based on cashews. If you're gonna make this for the stock solution, you can't have a lot of it because it's a cashew recipe. Um, so cashews are limited. If you're doing maximum weight loss, you can't have it at all. But for Lex, he doesn't care about uh, yeah, the he's whole, swimming, yeah. growing teenager. He doesn't care. Yeah. All right, so we're going to start making the cheese sauce here. And here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with two full cups of uh, cashew. Handful of carrots. We add, carrots isn't really part of the recipe, but we're adding it because we're trying to get Lex to have more vegetables and he doesn't know it, so we put those in there, all right? We're adding two and a half cups of filtered water. So we're putting that right in here. Uh, I'm going to need a this teaspoon, perfect. And then we're going to start adding our spices. So we're adding a heaping teaspoon of onion powder, right? Plenty of onion powder. And then we're adding a heaping teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, so plenty of that. Make sure there's plenty of it, right? We're also adding, uh, Tim's going to get lemon juice. We're also adding a teaspoon of salt. If you don't have the salt, it really changes the taste of this. So um, I add it, leave it out if you want. A teaspoon of salt, but it's making a lot of servings. It's making like 20 to 30 servings, right? Um, and then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of paprika. Let's see if I have a teaspoon left in here. I don't think I do. Yeah, actually I do, it's the whole thing. All right, teaspoon of paprika here, All right? I'm also adding, there's the lemon. Hang on, it's one tablespoon. All right, that's it up, that's way too much lemon, okay. It's gonna be very lemony, so let's hope Lex eats it. Um, and then I'm gonna add a, uh, so you're adding one, uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice, all right? Um, a lemon gets you about two and a half tablespoons. I'm gonna add a jar of uh, diced pimentos. When I buy these pimentos, if I get them at Kroger, fries here, they're $1.49. If I get the same jar at Sprouts, they're $2.49 for the exact same jar. Little right? pro tip. Yeah, so. Get him, at, get him at Kroger if you can, right? And then I've got a half a cup of nutritional yeast that I'm popping in, all right? So that's all my spices. I'm gonna take this to the blender and get this blended till smooth. I blend this on high for two minutes. So it is complete, because it's cashews, right? So I wanna make sure that it's ready to go. So we're gonna do that next. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so we've blended the, uh, the cheese sauce. We're gonna dump it into one of our beautiful uh, Dal Strong three-quart sauce pots that uh, Dal Strong was nice enough to provide for us. Thank you very much, Dal Strong. 
Uh, these sauce pots are made of five ply metal, right? Yep. They're absolutely amazing. Again, a link to all of Dalsrong's products are below uh, in the description below this video. All right, so here's what we do. We pop in the, we pop in the, um, the mixture from here. And we also add another cup of water, right? It just gives us more volume. And we're gonna pop that in here. So here's what I like to do, because I wanna make sure I get all of this out. I dump this right in here, right? Into a cold sauce pot. And then I take the water and I kind of dump it in here, right? And then I just kind of go like this to try, and, to try and get all that out, right? And now I feel like the blender, I've gotten everything I can out of here, right? And that can kind of go in the sink. You want to rinse it off right away. I'm going to put this on medium heat. You don't want this to burn. It will burn. So you kind of have to stir it a lot. Um, and you don't want to cook it on high because it's going to be too fast. Do you want this? That's perfect. And give me a spoon rest if you can. Mm -hmm. um, when you see this starting to steam, it's going to start thicken up. The idea is to get this, I know we added water in it, but it will thicken up, all right? So for now, I'm just kind of mixing it up, and I'll just keep mixing it slowly here. This induction cooktop will cook really fast, and you want to get to a point where it thickens, all right? So that's what we're doing. And that won't, I mean, depending, it could take you up to 20 minutes. On this cooktop, it probably won't take more than seven or eight minutes. And you can see here, I'm just kind of mixing this up, and if you look, it's very watery, right? Like there's no thickness to this. So you'll see in a minute that that's gonna change here. So keep watching. I'm just kind of using a whisk now because I want to make sure I get everything on the bottom. Um, and you'll know when it's ready because you can, I don't know if you can see, but there is some steam coming up, so we're getting close. As soon as the, the uh, mixture starts bubbling, boiling, you're done, right? When you see the boiling happen, it should be thick enough already. If it's not, let it continue to cook for a minute or two longer and then shut the heat off. But at that point, you don't want it to cook much longer than that because you don't want it to burn. So I'm almost there. As I'm doing this, I can tell it's getting thicker and I can see the steam, but we're not quite bubbling yet. All right, you see here where it's bubbling? So it's boiling, so we are done. So you want to just kind of make sure it's, it's got the, the consistency of cheese sauce. If you look here, right? You can see here, that's much thicker, right? You see how thick that is? So this is done and it's ready to go. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna shut this off and now we just need to let this cool and then we'll pour it into um, a container. We just put it into big glass mason jars. You have to let it kind of cool to room temperature before you put the cover on. It'll create a little like skin scab on it. That's okay, you can mix it in later on. But if you put the cover on while it's hot and throw it in the refrigerator, then it thins out the sauce, we've found out, right? So I'm just gonna keep stirring this for a minute or two. Hey, why don't you grab me a trivet? We'll take this off um, and put it over here so it stops cooking. Tell us about this, this uh, tortilla maker. Yeah, so this is cast iron, it is heavy duty. So I have it on the cutting board, not on the counter because even the handle is cast iron, it would destroy the any countertop, I think. So you're gonna kind of press out tortillas? We are. And you're holding some... Yeah, and this is my little shortcut or pro tip. They sell these on Amazon. I think you can get these on Etsy as well. But it's parchment paper already cut to the size of this so it doesn't stick. It just makes it a lot easier. So they're round, pre-made for this. All right, so I have my bowl of dough. Just gonna smack it down a little bit. Put parchment on it again. So we're gonna press and then I'm just going to rotate this uh, 180. Great. Now I should have sides that are much more uniform. And I think the pan has been heating now for a little while. Yeah, I'm not sure it's there yet. So, Let me try throwing it in and see what happens. And I feel some heat. Well, okay. there's definitely some heat on it. I just don't know if it's hot enough. So the pan has to be hot enough to do this. So I just don't know if we're there yet. But we'll know here in a minute. If you can grab it and slide it around, then, which we can, then the pan's probably hot enough. Great. So you're on your way. It's starting to smoke a little bit here. All right, so that's starting to smoke, so I'm going to flip it. Yep. All right, so let's try flipping yep. it, right? So we're gonna flip it a third time, and let's see what happens. If you're doing this right, it will start bubbling on the third flip, and there it goes. I right, see how it's like bubbling now, right? So that's done. All right, so we're just gonna drop this right in here, our little uh, 
container that we probably got at TJ Maxx somewhere. A right? little tortilla warmer, tortilla warmer, right? And go to the next one. And this is all we're doing. We're just gonna do one after the other until this is, until we've made enough of this for tonight, or and we'll put the rest in the fridge or until it's all gone. And we're gonna make tortillas. All right, looks like it's rising right here. So we're good there. Let's get this out, out and put it right here. All right, number two down, let's pop that one in. And we're just gonna keep going until they're all done. So at this point, we can probably get the, uh, the cheese sauce into a, a jar. Yeah. So you wanna grab a jar for that, I'll show what we did with this. This cashew-based cheese sauce, it is absolutely the best cheese sauce. Like, there's nothing better than this. Mm -hmm. All the ones that you've tried from all the different people, like, it doesn't compare to this. We just put it in a big glass container that's airtight, and then we just serve it all week. And uh, you probably get like five days out of that. I wouldn't keep it any longer than that. Maybe seven. Uh, it's usually gone. Like we make it on Sunday. On Friday it's gone, right? Maybe Saturday morning it's gone and we have to make it again. So it doesn't last for us longer than that anyway. So next we're gonna do the salad fixings, right? Mm -hmm. We call it salad fixings, but this is for salad or for spring rolls, however you want to do it. Uh, we're just gonna call it salad fixing. And we just get these uh, organic romaine hearts from Costco. Like the whole bag is, it was three forty nine. dollars it's still the same price or did it go up? I think it's maybe like four twenty nine or something, or something yeah. yeah. So they've went up, it's still a great value. Six heads for four something. Um, and that's pretty economical. So I'm gonna cut these up and get them ready for use. Okay, so we have that going on. I'm over here getting ready to cook pizzas in the meantime while we're salad prepping. So for Lex, I'm using um, these mozzarella shreds from almond milk. And then I've got just Trader Joe's pizza sauce. These are, it's one of the shortcuts where, um, you know, again, this is for him. Yeah, so for stock solution, you're not making uh, pizzas with uh, almond uh, shreds on it. Uh, but for our 15 year old, this is a family meal prep uh, thing we're doing today. He's definitely getting uh, some pizzas ready to go. Uh, for us, we're getting the salad stuff. So uh, here's what I like to do with this. I just cut my lettuce. Uh, I cut the piece of it off at the end, right? And then I cut it the long way. And then I turn it on its side and cut it again. So I got you know, two cuts that are crisscross, right? And then I just start cutting it uh, the short way like this. And that kind of gives me bite-sized pieces of lettuce that I can use in spring rolls or salad. If I'm just using it in spring rolls, then I'll have a finer cut and I'll shred it. But if I, might, if I might use it in salads, I don't want shredded lettuce in my salad, so I make it bite-sized. And that's what I do. And then I just take it and throw it right into the salad spinner so I can get it cleaned up in the sink, all right? And I'm just gonna keep doing that and Tim will keep explaining to you what he's doing. Okay, so I either, um, so we've got some uh, corn grits, polenta. You shall just uh, sprinkle this on the peel and again, we're using an oven tonight, but you can absolutely do this on the grill if you want to keep the house a little cooler. And it's 111 degrees outside. Yeah. Like, and the oven's on. Okay. So, I've got my dough ball. It's risen up to where I'm happy with it. I'm just going to punch it like this. And all of a sudden, you see how it has ridges on here? And I'll just go around, kind of pulling it so that I have a, a ridge or a crust. What you don't want to do is roller it out. Right? Because yeah. that gets out all the natural little bubbles. Sorry, excuse me? Oh, yeah. Alright, so I laid that down now on the polenta, the cornmeal here. Spoonful okay. of sauce. It's yeah, chunky. Yeah, over here. Can't you want to see it? it? Yeah, okay. Okay. So I'm spooning some of this chunky sauce on, and I'm trying to get it up on the crust a little bit. Again, really rough. Again, this is a snack for a 15 year old. He really doesn't like a lot of cheese, but look at it, it's gonna melt, cover. This is a great snack. What temperature are you setting the oven at? So I set the oven at 500 degrees. Uh, when I open this up, it's only gonna be in there for five minutes. Seems to do the trick. It's going on a stone. Right, so we're so. baking this thing. We're not pre-baking the crust or anything. We're just making it, right? Yeah. on the In the oven, on the pizza stone, middle rack, 500 degrees and for about five minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. That's how we cook pizza. So some people pre-cook the crust and all that. We do not. Yeah, so that's the process. So you'll see me jutting back and forth doing that, but now you know what's going on. So. 
All right, so I'm gonna cut, finish cutting these up right here. Yeah. Uh, this is good. Our salad cleaned up here. Sometimes this always isn't green, but it looks really good still. This lettuce looks really good, right? Yeah. It's got all the different shades that we want, so I'm really happy with it. All right, all right. so I've got uh, three heads in here, so we can take this to the sink and rinse this out okay. and get that clean if you want to do that. All right, all right coming through a salad. All right, so the salad, we're just going to put in a glass bowl here, yep. um, and we'll throw this red cover on it, right, you lay it right yep. on top of there, and throw it in the fridge, and that salad's kind of ready to go. Yeah, right? it's been rinsed, I put some ice cubes in it. Yeah, it's I mean, cold. I guess it's not a salad, it's just lettuce, right? Lettuce. All right, so we've got the food processor here, and we're going to use it to, to kind of shred some of the other fixings, right? Yeah, we don't use this a lot, but when we're doing cabbage, carrot, I've got cucumber to use, it's time to bring out... The big gun. The big gun. All right, so there's the, the blade going by. So you can see the carrots are getting shred here. I'm just putting them in a little tube here. The reason I want them shredded is if they're in spring roll, I don't want chunks of carrots in spring roll. All right, so I've got a lot of carrot goo here. And all right, so we got a lot of this right here. Here, thanks. Um, let's move this over here. I want to dump this into one of these right here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. Let me rinse this out. Yeah, rinse that and rinse this too. All right, time to set pizza in. All right, we reached the 500, so the pizzas are going in. All right, so that's in, right? So we're good there. So if I want to take this off, I will. I will. It's off. So, all right. So let's get rid of this. This is about the same amount. So I want you to grab this here. Uh, so on the countertop, right? Like the stuff falling all over the place. But this purple from from this and the uh, uh, the orange from the carrot are the two biggest stainers of the countertop. So both of those stain. So as soon as you get it on the countertop. You want to clean up the mess, otherwise you're really going to be scrubbing to get that stuff out. All right, so take this here. Yep. All right, so we've got some of our salad fixings done here. So what's next? All right, I'm going to start on the cucumbers. All right. All right. Well, we don't eat cucumber because I can't stand them, but you love them. Me, not so much. Oh. Okay. okay. Our alarm went off for the pizza. Oh. I just wanted to show you that. So it's not perfectly done right now because we're just going in the toaster oven to heat up. So for right now, this is the perfect color. Yeah, I mean, that looks, is it, it looks like it's done to me. Is it it is, it looks perfect. All right, so, so what do we do with it now? I'm gonna go put this on the cooling rack. Okay. I'm gonna start the process over again, which is to- There's a cooling rack. Yay, all right. Yeah, the cooling rack's more than just for cookies. You know? all right. Yeah, so it's the cookie rack, which is now being used as the pizza cooling rack. All right, so fist pump that gives me the divot and then I'm able to just go around to have that crust edge. I think you'll notice with a lot of kids, if the crust is good, they just, they'll be happy with the crust and like tomato sauce. I mean, yeah. Bring this up so you guys can see a little more. You can see there's just chunks of tomato on there. That's perfect. Some of this almond cheese. So, just lightly sprinkled, not heavy. All right, we'll go back in the oven. Five minutes. All right, so while your timer is going for that pizza, so you have your cucumbers yes. right here, right? All right. So we're using English. I don't feel like I need to to take some of the skin off, but I do. I like the design when it's half done. Oh, so you make little stripes? Correct. Oh, we fancy. So. This is such a high-end cooking show now. No, no, not in English cucumbers. You don't need to really worry about this, but I just kind of like that tiger striped look. I wish I liked cucumbers, I just don't. This I know, wait till you see the cucumber salads coming out, Joey. This is another thing that you and April both love that I don't love, right? You both love cucumbers, I don't like them. So I like cutting these into fourths for our night when we make the wraps, uh, when I have it in salad. I like this chunk. So this is kind of what we're going for. 
Now, other things in salads, I'll leave it whole, but for what we have going on this week, um, um, I, I like this style better. So I'll just get it, cube them up. All right, so you got your, your cucumbers cut and ready to go there, right? Yes, yes. So here they are right here, right? So we'll leave that right here. All right, let's get that pizza out. We'll see how that looks. This looks perfect. Um, it's great for reheating. It's just a little under. Um, but again, you can just see this is a light snack that Lex can take care of himself. So I'm gonna go put this on the cooling rack. Okay, so let's clean up this here. We can use this other cutting board for fresh fruit, right? Yeah, I guess one of my key things I wanted to share is that I'm cutting it in half and I'm making melon balls, putting it in a container, and then it's ready to go throughout the week to eat. And that's simpler, right, than yeah. having slices. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I don't need a slice though. I just spoon a bunch of, I take a fork and take some of those melon balls and eat them. I kind of snack on it throughout the day, like, um, so to me, it's easier than having a slice. Yeah. All right, so let me grab a container for you to scoop this. How into. gorgeous is that? Nice, deep, and red. Woo. All right, we can pop those right in here. And this is for the cantaloupe when we do that. So when this is chilled in the refrigerator, so refreshing. And we know that watermelon is anti-inflammatory, um, hydrating as well. It's really for good the for summer, you. so. There's so much water in there as you're pulling those out. Like, it's such a water-filled fruit. Yeah. And watermelon's diuretic also. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, you know, nice. really good for you. All right, so that's ready. Okay. Let me take that. All right. I believe this is our Dostrong red knife right here, right? Perfect for cutting up fruit. And we've been eating a lot of cantaloupe lately. It's really like ripe right now. I, I don't know about the rest of the country, even the rest of the world, but in Arizona, we have like fresh fruit all year and it's cheap. We're using this, this melon ball idea. What, share in the comments what you use um, for fruit. So just an example, we use a small watermelon, um, a Tucson melon, and then a small uh, seedless watermelon. You can see it's kind of a low amount, but we do have more to, to cut up, but this is kind of what we do in our household. I thought it was worth sharing with you guys for sure. If you don't have a plan, right, you're gonna fail, right? If you fail the plan, you plan to fail. So this is a good idea to, to do on a Sunday night and be ready all week, all right? Yeah. All right, that's our video for today. Please, you know I hate these videos. Hit that like button, show us some love. What's not to like? We have a whole week's worth of food ready to go here. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button, click on that bell, you get notified every time we have a video. Usually every, do you know what day videos come out? Mondays. Usually every Monday, that's but right. But for patrons? The patrons and PayPal supporters, they get Sunday. it. Like this time, they sent it to the Thursday night, Okay. right? So they got it by, on Friday morning, they got Monday's video, yeah. right? Sometimes I have them ahead of time that early, right? We'll um, but normally you'll get them two days ahead if you're a patron or a PayPal supporter, right? Yeah. Um, and leave a comment below. Um, what do we ask in the comments? What is, what is helpful, like we, we ask for comments on fruit the way you cut them up yes um, we could share with everyone so, uh even on the facebook group make a comment if that helps or you feel more comfortable with that but hey i hope this inspires you yeah i mean if if you were thinking about doing this this is how we do it you don't have to do all this with three heavy eaters right if this is one of you you don't need all this you can make one thing potatoes eat it all week right yeah. but we're taking yeah. things to go for lunch yes yes all that, so. yeah all right guys we'll see you next time okay bye bye Take care.